Hello, this is the next video in a playlist that I'm calling Parameter Estimation. And we're going to look at jointly sufficient statistics. Now let's let XI be IID from a PDF or PMF, and we're going to call it F of XI, and where this theta can now be vector valued. So where theta lives in a parameter space that's a subset of you know, K dimensions. In previous videos, we only considered theta as a part of the real number line, you know, as one dimensional. Now here, theta can be vector values of k dimensions. So let's let t1 through tm be statistics, and we're going to let represent all of these statistics in a vector t. Uh, the Fisher name and factorization theorem, which we have a video, I put quotes around it because I have a video called Fisher Name and Factorization, <clears throat> but it, it really only deals with real valued parameters, not vector valued. And so the theorem for vector values is actually the same as for uh, one dimensional case or, or real valued parameters. So the statistic t in that the vector sign means it's potentially a vector. Remember, a vector of size one is a real, you know, is one dimensional. So this is the general way to state the Fisher name and factorization. They're jointly sufficient for theta if and only if the PDF or PMF represented by f of x given theta can be factored as follows into this factorization. Now, if you want more detail, watch this previous video. But this h is a non-negative uh, function of only the, the data, only the x's. K is a non-negative function of theta and the data, but only through the, the statistics T. Now, we're not going to give the proof because it's essentially the same as the uh, one-dimensional case. But we're going to go through some examples here. So let's let Xi be normal with mean mu and sigma squared. Now, using this notation of the theorem, we would, we would uh, say theta is a vector of size 2, you know, 2 dimension, mu and, and sigma squared. The density for a normal distribution is this. The joint distribution is, is this. So it's the product of all these. So there's n of these. And then you add the exponents and you get this. But this, now we need to see if we can factor it into h and k. Um, if we leave it like this, it sort of implies that the data or, the, or even the order statistics are sufficient for mu and theta, which is true. But can we do better? Remember, sufficient statistics is all about data reduction, data compression, uh, you know, finding a statistic or two to summarize, you know, the data well enough that we're not losing any information when we're estimating the parameters. So this, if we expand the uh, quadratic here, we get this, and then we uh, distribute the summation sign, right, and we get this. Now this is a function of the parameter theta, or mu and sigma squared, and two statistics, sum of xi and the sum of xi squared. So, th so this can be factored, in, and now h is actually just the number one but we can ignore it. So k is a function of mu and sigma squared and the data, but only through these two statistics. So that says that the sum of the xi and the sum of the xi squared are jointly sufficient for mu and sigma squared. The next example is the gamma, let xi be gamma. And so the density is this, and the joint density would be the product of all these which we get this. So then that says that the product of the xi and the sum of the xi's are jointly sufficient for alpha and beta. Uh, let's example three, let xi be beta uh, with alpha and beta the parameters. Here's the density. X is between uh, zero and one. The joint density would be the product of all these, and we get this. 
And so this is a function of alpha and beta and the data, but only through these two statistics. So that says the product of the XIs and the product of the 1 minus XIs are jointly sufficient for alpha and beta. Example 4, let's let unif uh, XI be uniform alpha to beta. And that says the density is 1 over beta minus alpha. The joint density would be the product of, of these, which, so it's 1 over beta minus alpha to the nth power, and of course all the XI have to be between alpha and beta. But if we create, so, so really one thing to think of, or note here is the support depends upon the parameters. So we sort of have to trick it into, uh, you know, create a function that represents the support. And we let i equal 1 or 0, and it's 1 if the minimum, so at the, the first order statistic is greater than alpha, and the largest or the nth order statistic is less than or equal to beta and zero otherwise. So then this density can be factored into this. And so this is a function of alpha and beta and the data, but the data only through the first order statistic and the nth order statistic. So the first and the nth are the sufficient statistics are jointly sufficient for alpha and beta. Well, that's all I have for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed that. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.